This is a training video to show subcontractors how to enter a request for payment or a payment application into CMIC, which is Pentalon's construction management software. So this is what the front page of CMIC Cloud looks like, and I'll type it in one more time so you can see it, cmiccloud.com. When you sign in as a subcontractor, the client ID will always be Pentalon. Now, for this video training purposes, I'm going to be using a fake or test company. However, each subcontractor will have their own user ID and password person who is associated with entering the billing or request for payments will have their own user ID and password that gives them access to the request for payment portal. Now, if you don't have that information, you can get that from the project administrator at Pentalon who's in charge of your project. Once you log in, you'll click here on CMIC field. This brings you into this screen. And if your company has more than one project with Pentalon, you can click here. This will pull up the name of the project that you're working on to do the request for payment. And you can click on this arrow here. And this will bring up a list of all of the projects that your company is associated with. Now this test company only has this one project, so there's only one displayed, but that is where you will change the project if you need to go to a different one. So for the request for payment, you will find that under the budget and cost management folder. You can see when you click on this plus and minus, it opens these folders into subfolders. So under the budget and cost management, you'll select request for payment. Once you have opened this request for payment folder, this will bring in a log of all the requests for payments that have been entered for your company for this specific project here. Because this is the first request for payment I'm doing for this test company, there is no previous information stored here. Now to add a request for payment, we are going to choose add request for payment. Your company will automatically be generated in the vendor name here. You're going to click on this arrow, and this is going to actually bring in your subcontract for that project. So once you click on that and wait a sec, we'll see that down here, here is your subcontract with each line item that we have previously worked out with your company. So here you'll have the name of the task, the amount, the original amount on the contract. Once you start adding more requests for payments, a completed amount will show that the amount that you've billed to date will have the retention amount um, here, the total retention over time, and up here, this is going to calculate the gross amount, the retaining, the retention amount, and the net amount for that month that you're billing. For the invoice number, this can be either the number of requests for payment you're entering. You can also choose if you have an internal invoice number um, related to this request for payment. You can also use that for your um, records. So I'm going to choose one because this is the first request for payment. For the invoice date, you will choose the day that you are entering the request for payment. And the due date will automatically fill in 30 days after that day. For the description, you will leave the name of the project that auto-populates here and add afterwards RFP and the number 
of request for payment that you are entering. Now we'll come down to actually enter the amount that you're billing for for each line item. Down here, this will also show any approved change orders that are connected to your subcontract, and that will allow you to bill towards them down in this um, area here. However, for this company, we don't have any entered sub, uh, excuse me, change orders. So we don't have anything to show here. So for this month, I'm going to be billing for the labor on building one, $5,000. And I'll just hit enter. It will automatically come into this box and add to whatever you've billed before. We haven't billed anything here, so it's just the same amount. Now for materials on building one, I'm also going to be billing for $5,000. When I hit enter, you'll see that the retention automatically calculates here for each line item. And up in this box, we have the gross amount of $10,000, the retention, and the net amount here. Now, Once you have all of this information correct and the line items um, have the correct billing amount right here in the current amount, we are going to save. After you have all of your information saved here, if you see that you have accidentally entered the current amount wrong or you forgot that you need to add something to this line item or another line item, you can go into Edit RFP and that will allow you to add or change any amounts on these line items. Click Save if you've changed anything. The attachments is the next part of the request for payment for payment. And as you can see now, next to the attachments, um, there is no check mark. Once we add attachments, a check mark will appear notifying Pentalon and also you that there are attachments associated with this request for payment. So we will need to add a lien waiver, sworn statement, printed and signed. With every request for payment, we need a signed and filled out lien waiver and a signed and filled out sworn statement. So to add those attachments, we will come to add, upload new, Once this comes up, we are going to browse. So you don't have to add anything here. This will automatically come in once you choose your file. So we're going to browse. I'm going to add this sworn statement and lien waiver. I have these together on the same PDF, um, but technically they're two separate pages. We'll save that and give this a second. It will bring up, now we have this attachment here. You can click on the attachment when it um, is selected. This is what the lien waiver and sworn statement will look like. For the conditional lien waiver on this payment application line, You'll put the payment application number. The payment amount is going to be your gross amount minus the retention held. So for a $10,000 amount, we have 5% held, which was $500, which brings me to $9,500. Payment period line, you'll enter the last day of the month that you're billing for. Date. Put the company name here and then have whoever's in charge of this billing sign. And then you will also fill out a sworn statement. Now I have here um, two options. If you have no sub-tiered contractors or suppliers, you will write none. However, we still need the sworn statement even if you don't have a subcontract. Sub-tier contractor or a uh, or any suppliers, we still need to have this every month. So you can just put none and then sign. 
Or if you do have a sub-tiered contractor, you will put the name of the company, a name of the contact if you do have that person's name, the phone number, the email, what kind of material or uh, services they were offering, and also the amount that you're going to pay them. Then you'll sign and date. You'll save this and add it to your request for payment. And you'll see up here, we don't have any options to put this request for payment into the workflow. So we'll go back to the request for payment detail. Once you feel confident that everything is correct here, and you can see that blue check mark showed up, you have your attachments, then you are ready to put this into workflow. You won't be able to submit. You can see this button is grayed out. Instead of submitting this, we're actually going to put it into workflow. You can just close that. And what workflow does is put your request for payment into the Pentalon side of CMIC so that we can approve, reject, and look over your request for payment. If you do not have your sworn statement and lien waiver, please get that from the project administrator on your project. Once you have your request for payment in the workflow, you can always come back and now you can see that we have this in this log. If you ever have any questions about any request for payments that you may have put in, um, or you want to review something, you can always go to this folder and click on the invoice number and that will bring up your request for payment. So that is a little overview. If you have any questions, please contact the project administrator on your project.